it's 6, 6 a.m. I got woken up by Victor, the famous guy knocking on my door. He said um, his son-in-law is going to give me a tour today who is, I met yesterday and I'm 90% sure was drunk yesterday. So he's taking me on a tour today. And he kept saying Buscalin and everywhere I'm going, everybody's saying Buscalin, 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 Buscalin. But then I'm looking at like, there's a map here. I will try to get on video. And there's also like, there's like 20 villages around here. And Buscalin is like, everybody's going to Buscalin. I'm like, why? Buscalin, 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 Buscalin. Why? Constantly talking about Buscalin. And then I said, can I go, can I go to Tolgau? Because there was like, there's like a book here that I was looking at last night that has a different, different like villages. And Tolgau has like a hot, hot springs and a waterfall and like cool area. And like I just, I, the fact that everybody wants me to go to these fallen is enough to make me not want to go. And that's where those American girls went yesterday. And like, yeah, there's a tattoo artist there, but like, I don't, I don't care about the tattoos. In Lonely Planet, it says it like, yeah, there's still, there's still tribal conflicts out here. In Kalinga. Yeah, I can't go to Tolga. He said that last March they signed a peace agreement for the border and wh who got which irrigation. And then he says Tolga moved the border again. So, and then people from Tingayan bought guns and yeah, so it's like, no joke. But so there's like tribal conflict here, so I can't go to Tolga. But I could maybe go to Sumadel, which looks to be like a little bit shorter of a trek. Um, and there might be a waterfall there, but Victor, who's like knows everything, didn't know about it. You know, it's in a book here, so I don't know. A couple of things aren't really making sense. And he says, yeah, like uh, on a weekend, sometimes 200, 250 people go to Buscalan, and it's like, there's probably not that many people even in the village itself. So like, but he says it's a good place to go, so I don't know. I have to decide, go to Sumadel or Buscon. I can't decide. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat this breakfast, drink some coffee, keep you updated. Okay, I'm here with my tour guide, Randy, right? Yeah. This is Randy, and we are gonna go to Buscon. Yeah, today. Today. And he was just showing me going, we're gonna go to Pab Pablacion and get a jeepney? Yeah. To go, and then from where to where? Yeah, let's go to stop the model. Oh, okay, so we're gonna, we're here? Yeah. We're gonna hike over to here and then to here? Or no? No, no. Right here to Pebble, and then get a jeepney? Yeah, yeah. And come here yeah, tomorrow? And then hike to here? Yeah. And then where? Here. And then here? And then here we about down to the road. Down to the road? And up. <laughs> Back up? How much, how much hiking is that? Maybe uh, 24 hours. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right, here's the map. Cool. Okay. I'm ready. It smells like livestock shit. Look at that view. Wow, beautiful. That river. <clears throat> Look at that. It's beautiful. David, what is your name? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 
stop this and lose all the video I've got this entire trip. I was thinking about switching out memory cards for that reason. Maybe I'll do that. that jeepney at like boot boot or butt butt or something like that or somewhere near that and started this trek I don't know I rode that jeepney for like an hour and we're trekking all the way back to Tinglion today so like I'm a little bit nervous about that but anyways we've been now we've been trekking for like or hiking rather I'm starting to say trekking like everybody else when I really believe it's called hiking but we've been hiking for quite a while now we're at uh, Southern Southern Tinglion National High School. You can see all the kids around. I'm so trekked out, like I'm ready to just like go to the beach and relax, but I'm gonna be trekking for like eight hours today. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. Alright, we're here at a waterfall, we're almost like the boost on maybe halfway there or something. I am going to take a swim right here, cool off a little bit because it's smoking hot out here. It's been like beating down sun with like no clouds whatsoever and it is hot and I just hiked like a couple miles and that felt really really good. I'm totally refreshed now. I feel great. I mean look at this. Beautiful too. Made it. Boost going on. All right, I'm taking a time lapse over there, as you can see, right there. <laughs> Having a good time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is that taken? Um, this one was yesterday. This little piece here. 
Really? And this was done last year. It was 28 hours over six days. Wow. Yeah, it was rough. Now I'm sitting here again. I'm like, fuck, how did I survive last year? You know? <laughs> Dude, no kidding. It's pretty much. Uh, it's like bruising your arm. Oh no, this uh, this uh, charcoal. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Are you planning on getting any? I uh, haven't decided. I could probably be talked into it, but <laughs> I'm not like 100% gung ho. I don't have any tattoos to begin with, so this would be my first one. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Nice trekking. <clears throat> Flat. Oh, Buscalon is busy. Yeah. Many tourists there. Yeah. So down there where all those yeah. buses are, that's where we hiked from. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All the way down there to the waterfall and then up to here. This is where the rice terraces end. No more rice terraces. But there's some higher ones over there. So do you think most people just go to Buscalon and then turn around and go back? Or do most people c keep coming to no. butt butt proper? Yeah. But 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 go back down there in Buscalon down there. Ah, uh, okay. So this is the bean that I had for dinner last night. Cool. And then black beans, different. Oh, those are different beans? Yeah. Black beans. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, they're yeah. black. Huh. Oh, cool. Alright, finished another grueling hike. Hours and hours of hard trekking, steep hills, the whole nine yards. And we just got here, we're now in uh, Butt Butt proper. And I've got myself some coffee and some water. So that's just what I need. So I'm really happy. I really am like so exhausted. I didn't even want to get the camera out, but I figured I would because I'm now and I want to preserve this memory. So here's my view. This coffee that I'm drinking is native coffee. It's grown here, Kalinga coffee. Been passing by like all kinds of um, coffee trees and seeing like the little like um, beans and whatnot. Like there's one right over there. I, I doubt you can, it's kind of hidden amongst a bunch of other trees, but there's a coffee tree there and there's some coffee trees over there and we hiked past a bunch, but um, it's like locally, locally grown native coffee and it's really, really good. They've got a satellite TV here and they've got the NBA going, which I think is cool. That's good. The other thing I, I was just thinking about is like, it's so human to want to use mind altering substances, like no matter where you go in the world, like, like there's a group of like four or five guys over here, they're all chewing betel nut. Um, the first thing we do when we get here is drink coffee. Um, apparently marijuana is a problem here. People are drinking alcohol occasionally. Like, I'm thinking of like betel nut and coffee mostly because those are what grows here natively. But you know, for thousands and thousands of years, people have been using those to alter their consciousness. And like, I don't know, it's just weird. You know, you, all around the world, human beings are doing that. Whether it's with coffee, whether it's with marijuana, alcohol, 
whatever it is. That's just what humans do. That's all there is to it. It's just what humans do. <clears throat> all right, so we're inside here. About to eat some food. Go. Yeah, you're good. Green beans. And then something else I'm not sure of. Yeah. Uh, rice. What? Pork. Chili. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. And then that's where it was all cooked. That's the other yeah. I'm sure it's going to be really, really good. Alright, I ended up hiring a couple bikes to take us down, so. Check this view out. Five, two, three. What uh, what village is that over there? Uh, Donato. 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 Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Taking a huge risk here with the camera while motorbiking through some of like the most dangerous like sketched out roads I've ever ridden on a back of a motorcycle on. So we'll see what happens. But this is what it's all about right here. Getting this kind of stuff on video, baby. Kalinga. It's gonna be more of the same, so I'm gonna stop recording. Oh. <sighs> Guess I'll vlog. Oh, there's the map I was showing you earlier. What was the last thing I did? Probably that ride down on the motorcycle, motorbikes. That was a good ride. Gosh, that was forever. And then it was crazy, like, for the guy that was driving me, uh, our motorcycle ran out of gas, and so we didn't have, the engine was off. But we literally like kept going for maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes, because it was just so downhill, constantly downhill. Like, I can't believe the elevation change. So we just coasted downhill for like 25 minutes. Um, and then I hopped on third person on the back of the other bike and we rode three ways back. So it was crazy. And then I got back here, and it did, by that point it started raining. Like, I'm so glad I decided to get a ride back instead of hiking. Like, honestly, these people think nothing of hiking like 15 miles a day, like on steep, steep terrain. 15 miles on steep terrain, no big deal. But, anyways, I ended up paying 300 pesos for that ride back, which was, ended up being like a 45 minute, hour long ride back. It would have taken like three or four hours to hike. Um, ended up getting back here, I think maybe like noon or 1 p.m., maybe, no, 2 p.m., something like that. And the guy, the guy had said, yeah, we'll get back at like 4 or 5. So it makes sense that it would have taken that long. Anyway, my battery just died when I was doing that last vlog, but... And then I just sat out here for another half hour. It's weird, like, being here... I don't really want to listen to any of my books on tape that I have on my iPhone or music on my iPhone. I'd almost rather just sit out here and just watch the rain than do anything like that. You know, it's just kind of weird. Um, but anyway, after, I think where I ended was I got a ride down and then it like it just started raining. So I came back. Um, this place was like locked and nobody was around. So I'd be like, 
sit here and wait. Finally, Victor came, opened the place up. I took a shower, felt really good, um, and then laid down and like took a nap. And then like I got up and came out here, and now I'm time lapsing. The rain is like pretty much blocking the view of the mountain, and it's like coming in and out of view. Like look at look at this. See, like right now, right now you can't see the mountain, and like you can't really see it on there either. But um, as as the rain like comes and goes, the mountain like comes in and out of focus. So maybe I'll show you that time lapse as I'm sitting here. This is what the mountain's doing right now. Well, that first time lapse is over, and I've just been sitting here. I actually ended up listening to an audiobook on the Philippines um, that it's turned out to be pretty cool. It's called Culture Smart Philippines. It's only like three and a half hours of audio, but um, it's starting out with like the history of the Philippines and stuff. And I knew a lot of this already, but I'm, I'm finding it really interesting. And then I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, man, it would be really nice if I had some coffee. And then uh, just one of the two ladies that's working at this place, I guess, feeding me and taking care of me, walks out and boom, asks me if I want coffee. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I told her I was just thinking that I want coffee. And so there's coffee. And my view is still this. I started a new, t I started a new time lapse, which is this one. We'll see, I don't know. I mean, there's really, I've like pretty much maxed out the possibilities of time lapse here, I believe, but I'm still doing it because what the hell else am I going to do? Just sit here? So, going to drink this coffee, going to time lapse, going to listen to Culture Smart Philippines, going to relax, no cell service, no Wi Fi. We got back early from the trek today because I hired that thing. I think we got back at noon or one. And I asked, like, hey, what if I wanted to go to Tabuk today? Or what if I wanted to go back to Bontok today? They're like, nah, sorry. 7, 7.30 a.m. tomorrow is the only time you can go back, so I'm like legit stuck in Ting Lion, um, at least until tomorrow morning, so, and I am gonna go out tomorrow morning, um, and go on to Tabuk, so, so. Alright, <clears throat> I figured I'd, I'd tell, tell you guys what just happened is, um, so when I first got to Ting Lion, I'm sure you guys recognize on the vlog that I was like pissed off, like super down on this place, like disgusted by it. But there was this really nice lady that like welcomed me in, took me in, gave me that coffee, cooked me all that food, and like I sat there and hung out until somebody came to let me into this place. And like I was thinking about her today and like how nice that was to, she treated me like a guest. She was really very, very welcoming and very nice and stuff. I just saw her from, she was like working out over here, or working, like, I don't know, washing, washing something, I don't know. Um, and so I quick ran and grabbed a 500 peso bill, which is a uh, $10, and just went up and said, hey, you were, you were very kind to me yesterday, you were, I wanted to thank you, and here's a gift. And I gave her the 500, and she was like, she was smiling and said thank you, and was really happy about it, so, uh, be more than like, um, what I would have to pay at a restaurant. I mean, I'm most, I was getting at restaurants meals for 150 pesos, which is $3. So I gave them 200 pesos for the, the rice and pork and beans and stuff that I had, um, which is four bucks, which is, which is cool. But like, I don't know, people here are just much more welcoming and they're, they're, they're just uh, very generous. And like, I haven't been used to that. Like most of the time when I'm traveling in Asia, like I'm on the lookout for getting scanned. Like. Am I gonna get scammed? Am I gonna get scammed? Who's scamming me now? Like, because it's a major problem in lots of parts of the Asia, like getting scammed. And so, uh, this is just kind of a different sort of sense, like being in this village. Like, this village, what's it called? King Lion. This village, King Lion, is like, it's another village that's successful only by trekking, hiking. And then, um, people here are just nice. And, I, I, I really have never been anywhere else in Asia where 
like somebody would like that would like take you in, give you food and give you coffee without like asking for money and so I thought the least that I could do was to give her a little gift and I think she appreciated it and then she said like she was gonna maybe come over here and talk to me later tonight which is cool because I'm just like sitting here by myself doing nothing so anyway I thought I'd tell a little story but this is a cool little village I'm, I'm up on Ting Lion now Ting Lion thumbs up even even though there's cat, like pig shit and chicken shit and dog shit everywhere it's disgusting but thumbs up for Ting Lion people are great since the sun went down and I stopped the time lapses and now I just got dinner, which I'll show you.